Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Tillich, sales manager with iPlan Group. We are a self-directed IRA custodian, uh, passive in nature, and we specialize in holding alternative assets for our clients. One thing I wanted to mention before we start the webinar today is, uh, you know, always be sure to retain your legal, tax, and professional counsel before making any investment choices or decisions. That being said, I am extremely excited to have on Troy Eckerd, CEO and manager of Eckerd Enterprises today to talk about some really amazing ways to explode your wealth inside of an IRA. Uh, Troy's been in the oil, gas, and minerals business, mineral rights business for over 36 years. So a lot of experience, and he's going to share with us some ways that he and his investors are making phenomenal returns instead of their IRA accounts. Troy, how are you? Hey, man, Matt, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. We're really excited to have you on as well. Could you just give me a little bit of a background on yourself? Yeah, I started off in 1985 as a licensed FINRA broker working for a small firm in Dallas that was mainly focused on oil and gas drilling. And at the time, it was a a big incentive tax-wise for investors to reduce their taxable federal income by going out and drilling domestic wells. The United States was running out of oil and gas. Congress and the IRS was really encouraging high income earners to help develop and produce oil and gas to keep our energy costs down. And that's still in play today. And so I did that for a period of about uh, five or six years. I ultimately ended up owning my own investment firm. And then I started becoming a sponsor where I would put together my own ventures in 1995. And I'm bringing about almost 37 years of expertise purely in oil and gas exploration, mineral rights, pipelines, saltwater disposal wells, and steel fabrication for the oil business. So my entire career, almost going on 37 years, has been in the oil and gas space. That's amazing. So what brought you to start using IRA funds? How did you first hear about, you know, self-directed IRAs and being able to, you know, use your retirement uh, accounts to do what you do? Well, it's kind of funny. I, I didn't realize at the time, but I actually opened up my own self-directed IRA back in my 20s when in like 1991, and I was making some investments. And so where it wasn't really that mainstream to use a self-directed IRA, I've been doing it for 30 years. So I already was aware of the tool. It's a fantastic investment advantage by putting money inside of a self-directed IRA and avoiding paying the taxes on your gains and growth. But really, most oil and gas was not applicable for self-directed IRAs because you can't recognize losses inside of your IRA. Well, oil and gas expiration is predicated on the fact you're going to create losses by drilling because you have a lot of intangible cost. But I want that to be outside of my IRA so I can reduce my federal income tax liability. So the business I was in was predominantly drilling and expiration. So they didn't match. I had a great tool in the self-directed IRAs, but it did not match investors' desire to capture those losses and, and use them for tax planning. Up about four or five years ago, what we recognized, there was a, is a massive change within the oil and gas industry where now investors could compete with major private equity and institutions and go out and buy the actual underlying mineral rights, the same value the big oil companies had, but now it was available to private investors and it was available at a really, really low risk and in pretty much an abundant quantity. And that type of asset class, because it's real estate, it's real property, now we have a match. Now we have oil and gas mineral rights matching all the tools, all the IRS guidelines, all the advantages of holding it in your self-directed IRA. So the last three years, our business exploded with about 75% of our investors using self-directed IRAs to buy cash flowing minerals. So it's kind of more of a perfect marriage. You know, we happen to find a great asset, the self-directed IRA investors realize, wait a minute, I can buy minerals in my IRA. I can create all that income without paying taxes. We, we, we found a great match. And that's what's been happening the last three or four years. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, in this business, I find the same thing. People just don't know what's out there to invest into, right? So one of the reasons why we're having you on today is so you can show us a little bit about what you do and and, and to your point, why it's such a great fit for self-directed IRAs. So at this point, I'd like to just turn it over to you and uh, class is yours. 
I'll, I'll take about 10 minutes. That way it leaves us some time to talk at the end because obviously with, with yourself guiding this particular presentation, it'd be advantageous for you to look at the slides and say, hey, these are some questions that come to my mind and maybe the same kind of questions some of our viewers will have as well. All right, so let's get started. So first off, Eckerland and Acquisition, we believe in building wealth through owning minerals. Um, let's define what a mineral right is. The fact is, is that since 1985, with 37 years of experience, um, I've been involved in mineral rights for almost 37 years. I've been involved in leasing mineral rights from mineral owners, and I've been involved in developing oil and gas wells on minerals. So I've literally been sitting there involved, investing in and managing mineral rights for almost four decades, but not the way it is today. Today, instead of just it's kind of like looking for a key to a lock and you're tearing through your, your glove box, you're tearing through everything you find to find the key. And what you realize all along has been around your wrist on that little wristband that you had because you wanted, didn't want to lose it. So it's kind of like mineral rights. I've been drilling and doing pipelines and exploration, saltwater wells and production and not knowing that really the, the greatest intrinsic value was going to end up being the actual ownership of those mineral rights, which really has evolved over the last five or 10 years. So what are mineral rights? Well, they're real property. They're deeded and titled in the courthouse, just like any piece of real estate. Once you pay a one-time check or cash or investment to own that mineral right, no different than buying a residential lot, a commercial property, you own it. It's yours. Nobody can take it away. It's held in perpetuity. It is truly just like the IRS and self-directed IRAs look at it. It's real property. You have zero liabilities, zero capital cost exposure, zero holding costs, zero drilling risk, zero liability, zero environmental and zero expenses. Why? When the oil companies lease the minerals who are going to pay all the costs to develop the wells and drill, in that agreement, it says, Mr. Mineral, Mrs. Mineral Owner, we are going to lease the right to develop your minerals. We're going to take on and assume 100% of those exposures. You're going to get just a check every month. It's a royalty check, a percentage of all the money we make for every drop of oil and every molecule of gas that's produced on your minerals you're gonna get your proportionate share depending on how many minerals you own, how many mineral acres. So what I love about this particular asset, and it's perfect for a self-directed IRA, I don't want any losses inside my IRA. I don't wanna have any chances of losing my principal. I don't wanna have any assets that fail. So what I wanna do is buy something that has zero outbound exposure to cost or liability or risk. And what I want is 100% net or passive income coming into my IRA. I want nothing but income to grow that account so I can invest more and compound my value. It's passive. And I mean, I stress that twice in this because I want you to know that it is, is one where billion dollar oil companies have leased the minerals that we're buying. They have 100% of the risk, capital cost exposure. They manage it. They're some of the smartest, brightest oil companies in the world. And all I do is get a check every month. I get 12 checks and outside my IRA, I get a 1099. Inside my IRA, I don't pay any taxes because essentially it's tax deferred, which is why you invest in a self-directed IRA. It is truly a generational wealth asset class that will last 25 to 50 years or longer. What does it look like from the scope of within the United States, what does that opportunity look like? Well, it's not like trying to buy beachfront property. We can all define in the US which states have beachfront property and which ones don't. So that's limited. In the case of oil and gas mineral rights, there now is 30 states across the country that have these massive buried Grand Canyons that effectively are loaded with oil and gas. And we went from being almost out of oil and gas in 2008, which is why oil prices rent went up to $145 a barrel, to because of technology and computers and software and drilling practices, we discovered that these huge buried Grand Canyons are loaded with some of the highest content of oil and gas on the planet. And now we have the technology through horizontal drilling and frac stimulation to recover it. So all of a sudden, everything you see on the screen in pink and dark pink says, these are incredibly large, loaded, buried Grand Canes full of oil and gas. And now we have another 100 million mineral acres that are considered to be low risk, productive oil and gas mineral rights. Now we have an entire buffet of opportunity. This is what it looks like in our, in our focus. We're in the state of Oklahoma. It's like a buried Grand Canyon. You see that by the photograph on the right. And over time, that whole canyon filled up with dead plants and animals. It was then covered up by non-producing, non-oil and gas uh, covering because of tectonic movement and tectonic plates and earthquakes and volcanoes. And then it cooked like a pot of rice. Over time, you have three, 4,000 feet of earth that pressed down on these dead plants and animals that filled up this canyon and it cooked like a pot of rice. The magna, the, the volcanic magna in the earth acts like a cook, a cook pot, a crock pot, and it heats. And when it heats that dead plants and animals, 
it converts it into oil and gas. And that's what oil and gas is, dead plants and animals. So it's a perfect, perfect crock pot that was created in these deep basins. And they're massive in size. We don't have to guess. So we've taken out the risk, the risk of dry holes. We've taken out the risk of where it's at. We know where it's at. We know how thick it is. We know how much is there. Now it's about prudently deploying the capital. So it's perfect for yourself at Directed IRA in that you and I don't have to pick the right mineral acre. You and I don't have to worry about where to drill the well. What we worry about is where have the major billion dollar companies like Chevron and Marathon and Exxon and Continental, where have they decided to drill within that canyon? And that's where we want to go buy those minerals. We want to follow the smartest, brightest oil companies in the world to decide where they think the best oil and gas is recovered. And that's where we're going to focus on buying our minerals. Now, just to give uh, the, the audience a little bit of a view, below the surface, it looks like an underground plumbing project. So think about building a 10-story building. We got plumbing from the, seat, the 10th floor down to the basement, and it's all done through pipes and conduits. Well, that's really what they're doing below the surface. In the mineral rights that we own, there's multiple reservoirs that were deposited 20 million, 30 million, 50 million years ago, and each one of them are fully loaded with oil and gas. They just happen to be put in position at different times. So they take these big drilling rigs, they drill down, they turn sideways, they go out one or two miles, and they access all those reserves through their drilling techniques. And it looks just like you see on the screen, it looks like underground plumbing. Who are the operators? These are, if you think about it from a real estate perspective, we are the land holders. We own the land, we're the mineral owners. We've allowed to lease our property to major oil companies like Continental and Derby and Exxon and Marathon. They are our tenants. Effectively, we own 100% of the oil and gas in the ground. We have just decided to forego maybe 20 or 23% of our mineral cash flow in exchange for these oil companies to commit to spending 100% of the cost. So we get a free ride. Royalty is exactly what it is. It is a free check every month for everything that's sold as far as oil and gas off our minerals. These companies take all the risk. So what is it really that we're looking at inside of your self-directed IRA? It's repeatable. Cash flows every single month off these wells. These wells are projected to last 25 to 50 years. Each one of these mineral sections that we're in are looking at between four wells, pretty much on the low side, up to 36 wells as far as on a single mineral track. So we're looking at, like buying a 36-unit apartment complex, we're looking at additional well after well after well and more and more reserves. We take zero capital risk. It's 100% passive income. It absolutely is a net income asset where our basket of inbound cash is full. Outbound cash is virtually zero. There is no holding costs. There's no property tax. Uh, you don't get charged a fee at the end of the year. What you get is 12 distributions. And whether you're in, inside or outside your self-directed IRA, really all you have is a 1099. Well, inside our self-directed IRA, I don't even worry about that because I'm, a, I'm allowed by the IRS code to open up a self-directed IRA, to allow myself to put those assets in there and let it grow and compound over time because there's not any deterioration of that investment by holding cost or taxes. So we have a strategy at our company, uh, Matt. It's very simple. We believe that any investment opportunity that allows you to have aggregation, go out and find 10 residential properties, go out and find 10 areas where minerals are at. Most larger buyers don't want to take the time and effort. So you get rewarded by going out and doing the dirty work of aggregating assets across particular sectors or geographical areas. We believe that the next stage would, of course, would be maturation. Let your assets grow, let them mature, let them increase in value, get your income stabilized like you would a piece of uh, apartment complex or self-storage. And then you have to look at the L factor, which is liquidation. Again, that is a major, major advantage inside of a self-directed IRA because when I get ready to sell some of those mineral rights inside of my self-directed IRA, I'm not worried about paying the gains because I've got it inside my IRA. So I can really buy and sell, buy and sell and cash flow mineral rights inside of my IRA. And I can just do that until I'm either forced to take out a, a withdrawal from my IRA or I reach the point where I decide I want to start the liquidating assets in order to enjoy my latter years in life. So this is what I always tell everybody. How would you like to have 700 employees that are producing income 24 uh, hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year? That costs you nothing. I have no liabilities. I don't have anybody claiming sexual harassment or harassment or any HR issues. They don't ask for vacations. And that number is because today our company has interest in over 700 producing oil and gas wells we've acquired in the last 36 months. And they produce 24 hours a day around the clock. And again, it's all managed by billion dollar companies. So we have some of the greatest income generating assets with zero outbound cost, zero outbound liability. And we don't have to do anything except every month, go pick up the check in the mailbox for the income that we've made. What we like is minerals inside of your self-directed IRA. It's monthly cash flow. It's a compounding effect. Every month I get a check, it compounds the rate of return 
because it's such a frequent distribution. It's not an annual distribution. It's tax deferred, as we mentioned before. And of course, assets passed to beneficiaries outside of your probate are really important as you get older, figuring out how you move assets from you to your heirs and your family and your kids and do it with a minimal amount of disruption to your revenue and transfer of title. That is really an important factor inside of a self-directed IRA. How do you get started? You contact me at the number on the screen. Uh, you send me an email. We have a couple of wealth managers. We don't have salesmen. We're all just a company, family-owned business. So when you call our office, one of us will walk through and say, what are you trying to do? How can we help you? And then, of course, then we're going to reach out to professionals like Matt and his organization, figure out, you know, do you have a self-directed IRA? Should you open a self-directed IRA? How do you fund it? And get carefully uh, information and advice and suggestions about the proper account, what fits your portfolio, and what fits your uh, particular asset class. One last thing before I turn it back to you, Matt, is that our company believes in technology. That's why we're buying minerals. We believe technology with the oil and gas industry is what changed us from being almost out of oil and gas in 2008 to now we're the number one oil producer as far as volume in the world. And what we did here at Eckerd is we created what we call Eckerd Insight, which is a, an application we built over the last year, spent a lot of money doing it. But now our investors can go on there and look at their portfolio, their performance, their mineral tracks by track. We scrape data straight from the uh, different reporting authorities, the taxing authority, the commission that reports all oil and gas in the state of Oklahoma. And it all is scraped and dumped into our app, both on the computer and on your phone. And what it does is it gives you transparency. It gives you access to your account. When we look at the year end, when we need, we need to give fair market values back to the custodians so they can do their reporting, this allows us to instantaneously be able to pull information and get those FMVs out to, to uh, organizations like yours that says, hey, here's what these assets look like. So it creates a truly functional, usable, user-friendly application that makes mineral investing, mineral right investing mainstream like any other investment you have. Hey, look, I don't know about you. I'd rather be on a beach sitting there watching my waves come in just like this, creating passive income, constant cash flow, and absolutely never get that phone call saying, hey, you got to pay a bill or a tornado hit your house or you got sheetrock or your tenants moved out or we have these uh, uh, COVID rules that say they don't have to pay rent. In my case, I've never stopped making revenue for the last two years during COVID off of every well I own. Every month I've gotten a check. I just want to thank you guys for your time on this. Matt, I'll turn it back over to you, my friend. Excellent. So first, I, I want to say that app is a game changer. Oh, it because, is. Because um, especially on our end, one of the challenges, you know, our, our business as a self-directed IRA administrator can be very paperwork intensive because we have to get the value of, of that asset in the IRA and report the value of the IRA to the IRS on a yearly basis. So sometimes getting the value of the updated assets on a yearly basis can be somewhat of a struggle, you know, a problem. So that I, I love the idea that you have an app there with updated values. That is an absolute game changer for, for clients, I think. For yeah, sure. Well, what, what I noticed is that, you know, in every single mineral opportunity, generally speaking, a broad statement, but I'm probably the, the largest investor in everything that I do at my company because it's a family owned energy business. So when I sat down with my team two years ago, I said, you know, I really love what I'm doing. I said, you know, the problem is, is that the more we buy, the bigger the portfolio goes, the more wells we have. I and mean, we have 700 wells today. Um, it's very reasonable that we expect by the end of 2022, we'll be up to close to 1,500 to 2,000 wells we have an interest in. It's How in the world am I going to ever get my brain around all those different minerals and portfolios? I said, we've got to create an application that not only are our professional custodians like yourself and your organization, but also investors, they're more sophisticated. They want access to data. If you don't come into the, uh, the, the, the current time and era of data communication extraction, you find yourself in the position of being either left behind or avoided. People just go, that doesn't look like today's investments. I'm just not going to do it. Well, you've already asked all of these investors to take the first step, which is taking control of their own investments by doing what? Moving out of public equities, opening up a self-directed IRA and with iPlan, and then going ahead and taking that opening and saying, now I can control the type of alternative assets and investments I want to make. So that was the first big courageous step they took was taking control of their own investments. The next biggest thing that was important is, is that what do I invest in? Well, it's hard enough to get your head around cryptocurrency. What the hell is cryptocurrency? But then you start figuring out how do I track it? Well, you know, it's got all these different uh, crypto passages and authentication to get into it. It can be complex. We could not have minerals be something that was not accessible, uh, understandable, comprehensible, 
we had to put it in such a way that they say, look, this is the most fundamental cornerstone of a portfolio. If you can't see it, touch it, kick it or feel it, you probably shouldn't own it, right? So that's real estate, self-storage, mineral rights, pipelines. Now you've got to think to yourself, well, that's great. How do I get information on it? Well, that was our role was to make sure we came to the current status of information flow, data access, and do it all in one app. So our Eckerd Insights was based on that premise. Nice. Excellent. So, okay, so this brings up all their questions. Do you have a few minutes to kind of run through a few? Oh, yeah. I'm, I think we're ahead of schedule. You know, my problem is I only take one breath when I start. So, yeah, I, I did that one breath, I think. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So take a deep breath. I got a couple really important questions. Now, th so this is really a cool way to invest and grow your retirement. And I love the fact that you've made it more real estate based focused, right? So you're, yep. you're buying the asset and then leasing it out. That's great as well. So my question is, you know, obviously you built the, the app to, to track everything and, and you're going to get to that 1500 wells you know, goal, how do you as a company, how does Eckerd Enterprises keep track of all that internally? And also how often are you typically paying out distributions to the other owners? So the way our company works is that uh, our company, Eckerd Land, goes out and buys the minerals ahead of our investors. We own them. We take, we've literally walked out on the plank first. So we find them, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in Landman costs and title costs. Unlike most sponsors who offer investments, we actually go out and buy the minerals we're going to offer to our investors first. So I'm 100% at risk. We then look at our own cash flow, our own budget, and say, out of the seven million we bought of minerals this month, we're going to ask offer six million dollars to our partners. We're going to keep a million dollars for ourselves. We have software for both accounting. We have software for oil and gas reporting. We have software that's designed for petroleum engineer use. We have our own internal team. We have our full-time landmen, petroleum engineer, geologist, accounting team in place. So it's really easy for us because when you think about accounting, you always got debits and credits. But if all you're getting is a credit, which is a gross check-in with no deductions, it makes the accounting process a lot easier. We don't have to worry about billing anybody every month. We don't have to worry about sending our investors checks or fees. It's a gross check-in divided by the number of owners in that mineral track, a net checkout. We send out green envelope checks every month. So we already had those systems in place. All we've done is we have grown our back office as we've had more investors come on board and as we've had greater number of wells. So it is more of a, I would call it a two-piston engine. You know, we take one step forward by minerals. We then follow that with a second step, which is back office support. And it works really well because, as I said, we're not worried about billings and vendors and expenses and all kinds of costs. It's gross check in, net checks out to our investors, and then we go to the next 30-day cycle. So we asked how often. Every 30 days on the 25th of the month, we send distributions out. Most of them is done by ACH deposits. And the nice part about that is it's done 12 times a year. And then at the end of the year, we do a final accounting, say, here's what your assets are worth. Uh, f and fair market value, and here's what your revenue was for the year, and that's it. My clients are so so impressed. They're like, you mean there's there's literally nothing for me to do. There's nothing for you to do. In fact, if you gave us your CPA's name, we'd send the 1099 to them. You would never know you own minerals other than your account keeps going up month after month. So far, uh, Matt, we are in the last two years cash on cash. We're knocking about 17.6 percent return cash on cash across all portfolios, and that was mostly generated during what was incredibly historically low oil prices. So if that same 17.6% were in today's commodity prices, it'd be more like 25 to 30%. We believe in 2022, we'll be sitting over that 20 plus percent average return across all portfolios. So yeah, it's, it's, we've done a great job. It's been perfect timing. The self-directed IRAs, professional custodians like iPlan have made this all happen. 75% of our investors have used self-directed IRA capital and some 1031 real estate tax exchanges. And what they've done is avoid the tax. They're building wealth, growing assets. And they're doing it all under the protection of the rules followed by the IRS. That's that's amazing. So I love that so many people are using IRA money because you know only two to three percent of all IRAs or retirement plans are self-directed. Just so to hear that you're um, that heavy in IRA accounts is really really cool in my opinion. I just think it's awesome. I think it's a great way to do it. Like you said, you don't have to worry about the reporting. You don't have to do any uh, tax reporting because it's inside of your IRA. So you just watch your account, you know, balance grow. 
So here's the the most important question. How do you structure the investments? I.e., you buy the real estate, and then is it inside of a company, an LLC? Or, you know, and then how does the IRA, what does the IRA actually own when they uh, when they invest into one of these projects? Okay, so the way we do it is, let's say we buy 500 mineral acres. Uh, my company keeps 100, there's 400 acres available. It's more like buying a, a pizza. We've got a, we've got a 500 acre pizza. We're going to take a slice, but that slice is across the entire pool of minerals. We don't hand select the best minerals. We don't pick an X, Y coordinate. Hey, that one acre is mine, that acre is yours. We basically, so the way I would look at it, if somebody wanted 10% of that portfolio, they would put up the money to buy 50 of the 500 acres, but they own a piece of all 500 acres. So you own across every acre, every well, every oil and gas reserves that are available, which is why it's really massively diversified within each portfolio we offer. And so when that investor writes a check, they sign a purchase sale agreement. It'll be in the name of their self-directed IRA because it's going to be held by a custodian. That self-directed IRA recognizes those funds will go out of the self-directed IRA. It'll go to Eckerd regarding making that acquisition. The purchase sale agreement is executed. We provide an exhibit that shows all the deeds and titles of each mineral acre that has been acquired. About six months after you acquire it, we'll get back from the various courthouses, the change of ownership at the courthouse recording level comes back faster than that. But I say six months because of COVID and all the disruption work. We then send those deeds to each investor, including the IRA that, hey, here's the deeds that go with that purchase sale agreement. We also upload it to our app. So when the client logs into their own account, they see all the deeds are loaded. And about um, six months after the check is written, whether it be from a self-directed IRA or in person, then the revenue starts. And so let's just say of the 500 acres, we have 10 tracks, 10 individual tracks. Track number one may already be in production. It may have five new wells. Revenue starts 60 days after we acquire it. Well, we've already got revenue started. In every single case, every mineral package or portfolio we put together, there has been 100% income in those portfolios from day one to some degree. Most revenue will start within four to six months. And then we do have what we call accelerated distributions where when we bought the minerals, we had an effective date that might've been six months ago, like the effective date might've been October of 2021. And we got six months worth of production of revenue that's owed to us. When we get it in, our clients may get an eight, nine, 10, 12% return on the very first check because we've got eight or nine months worth of revenue behind us. So it's every month, it's effective dates, filed in the courthouse, revenue starts within six months after making the investments and it's track by track, mineral by mineral. So as you start to see all your mineral tracks come online inside of your portfolio, they just continues to add cash. And we've got more wells being drilled and more wells being put online. It's, it's a pretty incredible investment. And candidly, after 36 years, by far, this is the best investment product I've ever had. It's the best opportunity I've ever had. And it has really been complimented because of the chaos in the economy with inflation, with COVID, all that has been almost black swan events to the positive to being a mineral owner. And that, and we've got about another two or three years, in my view, of the same opportunity because I think inflation is going to drive energy, which in turn drives our accelerated returns and rates of returns and cash flow. So it's all coming together very nicely. Right. Excellent. So if I'm hearing you correctly, each IRA owns a physical deed, actual deed. It's not uh, purchasing shares of a company that in turn owns those deeds. So we, the IRA's ownership is, is is the actual piece of real estate, correct? Say that last part again. The, so the, it, the so deed is, is, the, is the proof of the ownership of the real estate, yes. It is a deed, okay. Okay, so, and, and the reason why, I mean, it's an important distinction because sometimes I've seen, you know, uh, other oil and gas ventures where the IRA actually just owns shares of an LLC and then the LLC or corporation goes out and, and buys the land, right? For the mineral rights, but uh, yeah. it's- we, we don't like it that way. I mean, that is how a lot of people do it. I don't like it for three reasons. Number one, um, I like the idea that I own what I own and I don't right. want to be tied in some, some kind of operating agreement where now I got to worry about fees and K-1s and tax reporting and delays and annual exactly. distributions. The other thing I don't like is that's how most Ponzi schemes and, and crooks like to do it. They like to wrap investments into a big package so it, show, it, it hides the amount of money they're making, it hides the fees they're making. And quite candidly, it allows people with ill intent to delay that they have done something wrong because it's all masked underneath this, this 
uh, LLC or what we call special purpose vehicle uh, enterprise. And the third thing is inside the IRA is not quite as important, but outside the IRA, because it's real property, it gives all of our investors outside of a self-directed IRA the ability to do a 1031 tax exchange. They could not do that from an LLC perspective. So real property, real assets, you own it, it's deeded in or outside of your self-directed IRA, you actually know what you own and you can identify it by a deed. And, and that's really important to most of our investors. Excellent. So yeah, that that is quite different than what I've seen as well. Very unique, very good way to do it. And those are excellent points that you bring up as far as why to go one route versus the other. So last question for you, when, when the returns are made, is it per deed, per asset, or is it a conglomerate of, let's say, several deeds or several so wills? It's, it's a conglomerate. So what we do is we we buy between five and ten million dollars a month of minerals that our partners participate with us, right? And it might be made up of two hundred different individual tracks because our acquisition team is specifically targeting areas where we believe has higher reserves, more activity, more drilling, more extraction, better well results. So. So let's just give you a simple example. We go look at a 300 acre tract of land. It's owned by four siblings who inherited it from the grandfather 60 years ago. And uh, sibling number one says, you look, I need to sell 25 acres of my 50 because I need to pay off my tract and my farm. We buy it, right? Well, we'll then buy five or 10 other tracks based on our financial model and what we want to generate in performance. We'll take that 25 acres combined with a bunch of other acres. We might have a 500 acre portfolio. Well, that means that you own a conglomerate or piece of all those acres inside of that, what we call a portfolio. But we might come back six months later and buy the second sibling's acres. Does she realize her brother sold it and she needs the money too? So we end up looking to buy and accumulate minerals based on financial modeling. We put them in individual portfolios, but some of our clients may own the same mineral track in three different portfolios because why? because we weren't able to negotiate all those minerals at the same time. It's like I tell everybody, I've been married 36 years. My wife and I met when she was 16, I was, I was barely 18. And I said, when you know it's right, you're all in. When I know which minerals are the best value and our acquisition team identifies that, I'd like to buy all 640 acres or one square mile of the minerals underneath that particular property because it's gonna be the very best that I can find. The problem is it's a very fragmented market. That's why I said aggregation is one of our big keys is, we go out and aggregate these minerals from smaller 5, 10, 20 acre owners because the 100, 500 acre minerals are either already sold to big private equity or they're too smart to sell. They don't need to sell. And so therefore they're not available. This is a business of getting your hands dirty, getting that shovel, pick an ax. And we go out way ahead of our investors and we do all the dirty work. When we deliver it, it's polished, it's clean, it's in a portfolio, ready to go to a self-directed IRA with a document that is approved and they get a check. So we make look very easy what Tiger Woods used to do when he used to drive the ball. He could stay right in the fairway and drive it 350 yards. I'd have to take a dozen balls just to stay out of the rough, you know? Right, definitely. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of awesome information. I really appreciate you diving so deep into that. Well, I do. I've done this since I was a kid, since I was 20. Um, what I love about the way I do business, I don't carry notepads. I don't carry all kinds of recorded information. I live, eat, sleep, and breathe what I do. It's my company, family-run business. Uh, my son's a petroleum engineer here. I've got my two son-in-law something to run the company. We've been doing this for almost four decades. And <clears throat> candidly, it's, it is a wide open runway. See, what most people don't understand is that in the United States, we're one of the only countries in the world where it is private ownership of their energy. Everybody else has it under concessions. The government owns it all. So right. in this country, we're motivated by entrepreneurial profit. So what you're going to see is the continuation of exploration and development into the next 50 years. Oil and gas makes up like 87% of all energy sources in the country. Even if they bring on green energy and solar and wind, we're still going to see an increase in fossil fuel consumption because nothing else makes any practical sense. Uh, solar and wind have to be $125 a barrel to be able to survive without subsidies. And that price is going up as inflation goes up. So I'm confident, one, it's going to be here for the next 50 plus years. Number two, it's going to increase in uh, required supply because demand is going to go up. No alternative energy is going to come close to even touching it. And more importantly is there's very, very few opportunities to invest in oil and gas where a small investor has a chance because the oil and gas industry really has become a major oil company game. These horizontal wells cost 10 to $15 million a piece before they used to be $2 million vertical wells. So you could buy $20,000 of a well. 
Now you can't even put a hundred thousand dollars in and pay for the cattle guard. So the only way to play the game is no longer to be in the well as much as it is to be the owner of all the minerals and let the oil companies go do their, their business and you sit back and just reap a check. We have about $500 billion mineral market in the United States. We have not even scratched the surface. So this is a 10 to 20 year investment opportunity. And you got to find somebody, in my view, like Eckert, who understands it, knows it, does it the right way, fully transparent, and gives the investor inside their self-directed IRA the comfort that they are building their retirement, they are creating wealth, avoiding the tax, but they're doing it with really a good sponsor that has great results along with a great asset class like mineral rights. Absolutely. And you're going out there and you, like you said, using a conglomerate, you're spreading that risk out as well. Yes, using sir. multiple, you know, multiple wells and investors to, like you said, compete with the big guys. So very cool. This is absolutely eye-opening to me for sure. And I've been in this business for 15 years. So Troy, thanks so much again for hopping on today and going over what you do. Yep, if anyone, I appreciate it. And let me know if I can do anything else to help you. And if any of your uh, viewers or, or any viewers have any further questions, they can always reach me at T Eckert at Eckert Enterprises.com. And I'll be more than glad to answer questions. If you're already in some, involved in some oil and gas investments or have some questions, feel free to ask me. I'm, I'm great about helping you ferret out good deals and bad deals. I'm not, I'm not a jealous guy. If you invest with 10 other oil companies, it doesn't hurt my feelings. You're going to make your decisions. <laughs> Ultimately, at the end of the day, you got to have a great custodian like I plan. You got to have great information where the, the information allows you to make the best and educated decision. And you got to look at different alternative assets because the stock market and bonds are sitting precariously high. And the question you got to ask yourself is, how do those regular markets respond during inflation? Because we are in raging inflation and it's going to probably last three to five years at least. And so therefore, what do you have to do to take a defensive position? I think that's where mineral rights become an important part.